Made Famous TV. Pretty nice career she had. I, you know, just looking at you, I can't believe that, you know, just talking about these roles you've had that you said at one point it was hard for you to get an agent, but I guess that's. Thank you. That's, it that's was. Hard. It really was. Yeah. But you know what? Here's the thing. My heart wasn't in the game. I wasn't, I wasn't okay. in it to win it. I was in it to survive. You know, mm -hmm. I wasn't about creating. I was about survival. It was about paying my rent. It wasn't mm -hmm. that I love acting. Now, if I act, it's because I really love the part. It's because it's what I want to do. Right. Um, and I think people can smell that desperation when you walk in a room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my concern was it's all I knew how to do. It's like, if I don't get this job, I can't pay my rent. What do I know how to do? You know, right. what, what I didn't go to school for anything else. That makes sense. So what, what message would you give any aspiring actress, actress coming up today? Um, so the same message I would give anybody doing anything, don't do it unless it brings you absolute joy and passion. I don't care what it is okay. and acting didn't bring that to me that's why that's a part of creation is passion and joy survival is resistance and regret mm -hmm. you know so i was living in that world um just don't don't act for money don't act to be famous act because you love the art of acting right and direct because it's the air you breathe otherwise you know it, mm, yeah, it can, get a little, it, can get, it can get a little funky monkey out there. <laughs> Giving a little bit too much free game now. Save that for the <laughs> yeah the exactly. sessions. Mm -hmm. So I was also reading um, on your website on mindologyfitness.com. dot com mm -hmm. when you said survival, it made me think because you are a survivor as well. I didn't know that you had endured what you had endured in your youthful, your younger years, right? Yeah. When you were a kid. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll let you speak on it. What were right. some of the things so, you endured? Yeah, so I, I'm not a big fan of the word survival and surviving. And I okay. get the uh, context that you're using it inside of, and I appreciate it, but I just want to shift a little and say, I think I thrived through those okay. situations. Yeah, I like that. I went from victim to victor. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was, I had a very difficult childhood. I was raised by a woman who had a lot of emotional challenges. I think that if she knew better, she would have done better. Mm -hmm. If she had opportunity to organically heal her emotions, she would have. And I think that's absolutely the um, inspiration for the work that I do, you know, is to make sure that everyone knows how to take care of their unwanted emotions. So they don't have to have breaks in psychosis. Like my mom, my mother did a lot. And so she was very abusive. She would beat me and she tried to kill herself in front of me when I was eight years old. She jumped out my bedroom window. Just a lot of things that messed, messed with my head as a kid. Um, and then living in foster care was challenging and getting molested and all that stuff that you just would hope that no one's child would have to deal with that, especially your own. Right. But here's again, I say what happened to me happened for me. Mm -hmm. Because what do I do is I work with women who have psychological challenges and I'm able to really work with them. I work with kids who have been abused. Like I, it's sort of like in a way I hate to, well, no, I don't hate to put it this way because it's the way it is. It's almost like I was in training boot camp. Like I went to the school of experience mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so that I could really um, have empathy for the people that I work with now. Oh, wow. So you were going through this because you started acting at a very young age. That's you right. were four years old, right? On mm -hmm. Sesame Street. Now, is that you, the, the little girl in the picture? It's like a black and white picture I saw. And, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. With, with pigtails? I think so. Yes, yes. And you were like, yeah, yeah. turn to the side. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So it was really strange, Shamika, because I was getting molested at night, getting beat in the morning, and then I was going to Sesame Street to play with Big Bird. Really? And I, I was getting molested so much. I thought that everyone got, I thought that that's just what happened at night to little girls. I like, I thought that happened to everyone. And did if you don't mind me asking and you can say, Hey, I don't want to talk about that, <laughs> but, um, 
at what age did you make did you make anybody aware at that time or when did you come out and say this is happening to me when i was uh eight years old my neighbor girl the girl that lived next door she told me she started talking to me about her private <clears throat> and i said oh yeah well my you know such and such always touches that Do doesn't yours always touch you there she's like what and i was like yeah he does it all the time and she's like no my mom told me no one should ever touch she she runs into her mother mom guess who touches troy's privates <laughs> oh oh no yes i'm glad she told but oh and her mother was like what Woo! thank god and is that how you ended up in the um in the system in foster care no it would it took a while because what happened was my mother didn't believe me she said i was lying when when i told her what her man was doing to me at night and so our relationship got worse after that. She started mm. to like really resent me. She kept him mm. and she, she had to keep me, I guess, but she started being really abusive and very mean, mm -hmm. you know, and like just hitting me a lot and like not hitting me, beating the shit out of me, quite frankly. Oh, wow. Um, I still have scars on my legs from her beatings. Yeah. She's horrific, horrific stuff. She did to me, but, um, I stayed with her until I was 10. And then I started running away from home and I would run mm. to the police. And then the police would put me in foster care or juvie hall. And then after I kept doing it a few times, they're like, we're just not gonna send you back anymore. You know, the laws were not what they are today. Mm -hmm. But finally, when I was like 11, they're like, we're not sending you back to that house anymore. They put me in foster care. And then they found my father, my, my, um, my biological father who was living mm. in Idaho, who I never met. And then I went to live with him and he turned out to be more abusive than my mother. I know I went from, I went from the fi frying pan to the fire, the fire to the frying pan. It's, it was like, I have two of the most abusive parents on the planet. I don't get it, but God had a plan, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the way I look at it. I thrived at those situations and mm -hmm. because I didn't have any parenting worth mentioning, I had to parent myself. You know, and I think that really gave me a, a muscle that I would not have normally been able to have access to, you know, it strengthened me in a way that that's good. That's a lot to go through. I know. Right. Uh, at at <laughs> such a young age. Right. And then, no, but I didn't know anything else. So it didn't seem like a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to compare it to. I was like, okay, right. am I going to get beat today or am I going to get molested today? Oh right. my goodness. I, yeah. I would never know, but they say you never know what someone has gone through and mm -hmm. one would never know. So now you're a mother yourself now. I am. And I thank God that I had such horrific parents because they gave me a front row view of exactly what I'd never wanted to do for my, to my child, my children. Okay. So I'm a very proud of the mom that I am. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, how many kids do you have? So I have a son who's 24 and I have a daughter who's 21. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Are they, uh, aspiring actors and actresses? they're both in the business. Oh, really? But my son is in the music business, but literally in the music business, he went to USC. He got his degree in the music business from Jimmy Iveen school of music. So he's like okay. really in the business side of it and he mm -hmm. loves it it's the air he breathes he's so passionate about it and my daughter she's in school also but she wants to she's a singer that's her thing okay likes to sing but she's also going to law school you know that's her her agenda so oh what kind of uh attorney does she want to be she wants to be business law okay Okay. Yeah. yeah. She, she'll always have a job. <laughs> right. Exactly. In, in business law. So how do you feel about them wanting to enter the entertainment industry? If it's what they're passionate about and it brings some joy, I love it. I don't care what they do. I just want them to have passion and joy. Everything you have to have passion and joy. Right. Right. But don't do it because it's going to make you sick. Really, it'll literally make you sick because you won't be at ease, you'll be at dis-ease that becomes a disease, right? 
Okay. Does your um what's your daughter's uh stage name? Well, we can go check her out at so we can <laughs> she's not on the stage yet. <laughs> oh not now yet. Okay, so we'll wait, we'll no, wait. But what? she goes her stage name, she goes by Dizzy Brooks. Dizzy Brooks, okay. Yeah, but if you go to your her website, you'd be like, that's Troy's daughter. She's, she's, she's got her own little style. Listen, you know, it's her full self-expression. Sometimes she goes a little bit, that freak flag fly is a little too high for me, but you know, she does what she wants to do. Right. I can tell them what to do at this point. They're grown, you know, but uh, sometimes she'll put up a post and I'm like, do you have to post that? <laughs> yeah, social like, yeah. media. Yeah, she's like, yeah, I do. At, at any point, um, did you try to dissuade them? Mm -hmm. well, I know you can't tell them now, but maybe when they were I younger. Never do that. No, no. Listen, my son, I said, you can be in the business, whatever business you want to be in. You just have to finish school. Mm -hmm. You have to get a degree. Same with her. That's the only thing. I don't care what they do after that. Well, I do actually, as long as they're <laughs> not hurting people, you know, but I would care about that. Um, but no, I love that they love what they do and they really love what they do. Oh, do they do that? Yeah, I mean, and he's learning the business side of things. I'm sure that's an advantage that a lot of people wish they had because you hear people say being in the music industry, especially that, you know, people get screwed over because they just don't know the business. The business. Yeah, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to work with the rappers and really teach them the business. You know, that's his thing. He's... God bless them both. I got really blessed. I got blessed. Yeah. I gotta ask you this before you go, because okay. you said singing. I've always wanted to know this. The answer is yes, no. <laughs> you know where I'm going. Yes, I was singing. I love Joey, and no, I was not singing at the end. Okay, I always wanted to know that because in oh. those movies, it seems like. <laughs> the directors or whoever was over that part or had something to do with that part, they did a great job of making it seem like y'all were really singing if y'all weren't really singing. Yeah, I wasn't. I, so I did sing the joke. The thing is, is I could, I can sing that song. I feel like moving on, uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I can definitely hit those notes. I could definitely sing that. I'm going to post that because people ask all the time, like, was that you? And it wasn't, but I can definitely wail like that. How come now? Now I must ask you. Never has it crossed your mind to pursue a career as a singer? So yes, I did release an album. George Duke produced it when I was uh, just my first season in Dynasty. But I couldn't. Again, for the life of me, I couldn't get a record deal. That is so crazy. So you see, it's just too consistent in terms of the failures and the rejections because I really think God wanted me to be on the path that I'm on. And if I was a successful recording artist or a really successful actress, I wouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing now. And I just love that I get to teach people how to take care of themselves organically. That means everything in the world to me. I definitely appreciate that. And, and it takes a lot, it takes a lot of courage to be able to say, Hey, you know what? let me pursue this calling because like I said, you, I see people who are in the industry and it doesn't look like they want to give it up. Right. You have people who are still pursuing that dream. Um, but for you to be able to say, Hey, you know what, I'm going to redirect. I'm going to take control of my life. Yeah. I, I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. And I might go back again, like I said, but it would be as a hobby, you know, it wouldn't right. be as a, to pay my rent. Yeah, you reach a certain point in life and you're like, you know what? It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not. And the thing is, is that I do love acting when I can really sink my teeth into a great role, mm -hmm. suspend disbelief and really mm, bring that writer's vision to, to life. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's art. It's poetry for me. Um, but what it takes to get that gig I'm just not willing to do anymore. Right. Well, have you ever, and I'm sorry, I know I said before I let you go, but I just thought of okay. something else. <laughs> okay, I'm good. One time. Um, you ever um like with like YouTube and stuff like that? I know it's probably easier said than done, but you know, I just hear about like uh like Issa Ray. I think about like how mm -hmm. she started insecure was originally a series called Awkward Black Girl, but it started like on YouTube. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. So, yeah. Have you ever thought about maybe going that route? No, 
Okay. No, I'm not interested. Listen, you know, I wrote BAPS, right? I was like, okay, no one's giving me a part. I'm going to write my own part. I wrote BAPS. They give it to Halle Berry. I wrote that for me. I know, right? <laughs> Are you so serious? Yes, I couldn't win. It was one thing after the other. So I was really meant not to be in that industry. I was meant to do what I'm doing. When there's, when it, when you, like, it's failure after failure after failure after failure after failure, you know, it's like, okay, how many windows does God have to shut? Yeah, that, that's, that would be a, a bit much for me. That would be so discouraging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote it for me. They're like, oh, this is perfect for Halle Berry, who, by the way, before she came onto the scene, I was I was the it girl, mm -hmm. but I did not hold it down like she held it down. She came, she showed up and she kicked the doors open. I was like pushing them open. She's like, excuse me, poom, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. so which is great because she loves it and she was great at it. And, and I'm, I applaud her. She's fantastic. I adore her. And it's because of her that Babs got made. So I have no issue there. But, um, you know, you start to look at like all these consistencies. <laughs> it's like, okay, right. I think God's trying to tell me something. Right. I can, but you, 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 they didn't just completely take your idea and just push you away and say, you don't get any piece of this. You were able to get something from that, right? I, I wrote myself a small part as the attorney. I played Tracy. Mm -hmm. And of course I got paid well, you know, okay. and I continue to get paid well. Yeah. I have great right. legal team that made sure that my contracts were solid. Okay. Um, yeah. But it's just, you know, like, you know, you're, you're like, did you do an album? Yes. George Duke produced my album, like right. the best of the best and still no play. Yeah. You just hear so many stories like that. Like you hear that, you know, there's this person that we know right but before this person there was this person right yeah. and mm -hmm. I just I hate that I hate that because you're such a you seem like such a beautiful soul talking to you right and I, I truly and I'm not just saying this I truly adore baby doll I'm sorry uh -huh. last time. but I truly do I was telling my friend I was interviewing you and she was like oh she got so excited she was like she's such a beautiful woman such a beautiful soul you know you. so she wanted to know what you had been up to but I'm sorry that you experienced that but I'm glad that you were able to turn that into a positive so yeah thank you very much happens for a reason so before you go what we got planned for the holidays Oh, girl, I'm going to be in the kitchen throwing down. I'm cooking. I'm a, my babies are coming and I'm making the mac and cheese. I always make the mac and cheese because I can't eat anybody else's mac and cheese unless it's my grandmother's. Okay. Right. And I don't like tired mac and cheese. It's just a waste <laughs> of calories. It's got to be right. So I make really great mac and cheese the way my grandmother made it. And I'm baking my pies. I, I do the most amazing pies. All of my dough, everything is from scratch. And I just oh. put so much love into it while I'm netting my dough. I'm saying my prayers, blessing my babies that are going to eat it. So. <laughs> oh, now I can tell my mom we got somewhere to go for Thanksgiving because she wants yeah. to order the food. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. You can't do, <laughs> you can't do that. No. And then I've got a lot of family coming up. So it's going to be 10 people in my house. Oh, nice. Nice. What are you doing? You're ordering uh, food. Uh, well, she's talking about ordering, but I'm hoping I can talk her out of it. Do you cook? Let's see how that goes. Every now and then. Okay. <laughs> we okay. can. I can, but it's not my favorite thing. I'll be honest. Okay. I, I, I thought about lying to you and saying, yeah, I cook all the time, but my yeah. friends that watch this, they would be like, now, Shamika. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But uh, no, it's just going to be a small group of us. Um, I got a family out of town. They, they don't feel comfortable traveling just yet. Right. You know, right. so mm -hmm. it's just going to be a small group of us. We're going to make the best of it. Okay, so. good. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, I, again, I do appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to talk to me. Um, My pleasure. All best wishes to you um, and you. happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. And